This is a tutorial on how to use the DFS Army Domination Station Optimizer for NFL. And as you can see here, the tool is open on screen. And the first thing you see when you open up the optimizer are the game tiles, which will show you team totals, game totals, and just give you a general idea of which games and teams to target in a particular run or on a particular week. Um, next up, we have all of our stacking options. Um, first, user uploadable projections here as an option as well. Um, we have two primary stacking options for NFL. One's called correlation stacking. The other one's called legacy stacking. Correlation stacking gives the user a ton of control, but is quite um, lengthy to set up and more difficult to manage. Legacy st stacking is a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, but it creates correlated stacks. So generally, if you're stacking or just optimizing for NFL, you want to start with at least this um, basic rule of stack QB with no less than one player of wide receiver, tight end, same team, add the rule. And this uh, sets up the QB plus one pass catcher rule for all your lineups. Uh, there are some additional options here that we'll cover in another video. Now for your settings. So going through them one by one, you can set the salary range of your players, something I generally do not mess with. Your fantasy points range, this is actually a useful setting. If you want to get rid of the um, worst, the lowest projected players, you can kind of bring that up. I usually, for a main slate, might put this at about four or five just to get rid of all the really bad plays on a particular slate or anybody. They're not showing up anyway, quite honestly. It just makes the tool run a little bit faster. You can set a minimum and maximum salary cap. This comes into play for showdowns on occasion if you might want to not spend the full salary or something along those lines. So you can set your minimum and maximum salary cap here. Normally, uh, this does not need to be messed with too much. Now, over here, you have your various set of options, optimal mode versus tournament mode. Optimal mode, tournament mode is really for mass multi-entry. So if you're making um, 150 lineups, it's better to use tournament mode. It gives you a little better spread of your players throughout the run. You can read up on exactly how it works right here with this little infographic. Um, here, you're gonna set the number of uniques per lineup. The number of uniques means how many players are changed out from lineup one to lineup number two to lineup number three. So uh, with one unique, each lineup might only change one player from one to the next. And the higher the number of uniques, the more spread out your player pool is likely to be. So you could choose between one and six uniques per lineup. Um, everybody has a preference. I kind of like between three to four for NFL. Um, ownership caps. So this allows you to cap the ownership projection on any lineup you create. And this allows you to avoid making overly chalky lineups. So each slate and size and everything is different, but you can control what owner max ownership percentage for lineups generated. This allows you to make lineups that are perfectly targeted for tournaments. High owned lineups are not really what is going to win a tournament for you. Um, here, you're going to set the number of lineups. So in this case, it's set by default to three, but you can set it to 20. You can either use this slider or set it to 150 or 20 or however many lineups you're looking to make on a given slate. Um, over here, again, on this sidebar, this al setting allows you to use players versus your defense. The optimizer is set to never allow a player to go against the opposing, quote, team defense. So if you want to allow it, you would change the setting to allow some players versus opposing defenses. This is really handy in really short slates, like a two game slate. You kind of need to allow a couple of guys versus your defense in smaller slates. The larger the slate, the less I'd ever want to use somebody versus my defense. And down here, browser versus server. Server is just a faster way of optimizing. So if things are moving slow on, um, on your browser based optimization, swap it to server and it will send the optimization out to a powerful server and it'll send it back to you. Um, hopefully faster than what your browser could do. Now, right over here, we have flex positions. So this is a max limit on how much of any of these position groups are allowed to be in your flex. So each side is a little bit unique with how this works, but as a pretty standard thing for me, I generally will set zero to the tight end position, meaning I don't tend to like to make a lot of lineups with two tight ends. This just gives the user control on what position group can show up in the flex. 
Here you've got the disallow more than one pass catcher from the same team unless the QB from that team is being used in the lineup. So this is a basic rule that some people requested. Um, it makes sense. As those two pass catchers, if they're both going off and winning a tournament for you, their quarterback is probably the guy that you wanted in your lineup that week. So you can allow that or disallow it. It is unchecked by default. And here's another really cool feature here where you could force at least X number of players. Here are the position groups under whatever projected ownership you like. So we did some research that says that most lineups that win a tournament have at least two um, players that aren't QB or defense that are under 10% owned. So you could set a rule to force that to happen just like this. This is unchecked by default. So you would have to check it if you wanted to use this particular rule. Um, finally, you have randomization percentage, which is just how much randomization to inject into your run. Some people use zero. Other people like to use tons of randomization. It's up to you. I will say that if your optimization run is moving slow, one of the best ways to get it to move faster is to add a little bit of randomization. So if you're kind of optimizing, but it's running slow, adding a little randomization is really, really helpful. It'll make it fly. As far as uh, how much randomization to use, it user preference. All right, continue on. You have these tabs here that show various things. So the all players is the entire player pool. And you can see there are 560 players in the pool, but the, the usable players are down to 159. The reason that's the case is because we eliminated all players with less than a 4.5 fantasy point total, which pushed most of the players into the excluded list. Now, really important, if a player is in your excluded list, but they're actually playing that week, so you want to be able to use them in lineups, but they're not available, they're in excluded. Either that would only happen because, for whatever reason, they have zero projection. Now, maybe we just found out that that player is playing or healthy or something like that, and they haven't gotten a projection yet. Well, as a user... If you ever have a player that's in exclusions that you want to use, you can simply go to the excluded tab, give them a projection above zero or above whatever your minimum fantasy points range is, and they will push from excluded into the usable section. So since I have set all players under 4.5 fantasy points as excluded, here we see that. You can get Cooper Cup in there. I had to put give him a five-point projection. That's it for that. Finally, you have your player filter. So as you want to look through the position groups, you can look one by one or see all of the position groups simultaneously. Now, as we get down to the player pool itself, note that one of the most important columns here is the fantasy points per dollar column. Uh, if you just simply click on the fantasy points per dollar column, it will automatically sort all the players by the highest value players. Not the highest projected, but the highest value on their projection relative to their salary. So as an example, Jeff Wilson Jr. on this particular slate um, is coming in at 3.37 fantasy points per dollar based on their 19.9 point fantasy projection. So um, there's 6K and 612.18. Uh, 6K times 3.37 equals 19.9K. So your best values are going to show up when you sort by fantasy points per dollar. And it's really important to understand that those players are going to be jammed into your lineups. That is what the optimizer wants to do. Um, you could also sort by salary right here. And this just shows the player salary, of course, team and opponent. DVP, um, so for NFL, we show the DVP or the uh, defense versus position. Gives you a little idea of the opposing defense and how good they are versus whatever position your player is in. And of course, rating. Now, the rating is our proprietary rating system, which shows 
how good of a matchup the player is in. And it accounts for everything that you as a user might want to look up and research by. So the rating is really good. And it's we found it to be incredibly predictive. As you can see here on this particular slate, I don't remember what week we opened up. I'm on the back test mode here. But you can see we had a 94 rating on Josh Jacobs that week. And he wound up going crazy for 51.3 fantasy points. Now, the one column that you see here that you will not see on the live screen is the final fantasy points column. Of course, we don't know what the final fantasy points will be till after a slate. And we are looking at back test mode as the, it, we are not in season. So we don't have regular slates loaded in here. Um, so in order to run lineups, the first thing we want to do is um, it, it, this being DraftKings, the first thing we need to do is customize. You, uh, the user has to make two custom adjustments. So what I tell you to do is either just like or dislike any two players, and that will cover a couple of customizations. You can also set a min or a max limit on any two players, and that will be considered custom adjustments. So setting max limits on the exposures or just giving a like or a dislike to a player you either like or don't like that week is more than enough. Now, as we go through the player pool, let's explain what like and dislike is. So the first thing you could do as a user is use this to increase or decrease the projection for this particular player. So in this case, this is Christian McCaffrey and he's got a projection of 20.63. Now, if I hit the like button, notice, his projection went up by 5% to 21.62. If I hit the love, we're up 10% and we're at 22.69. And of course, the adore will get you a 15% boost in the player projection. Similarly, if we hit the dislike button, we'll get a 10% reduction or a 5% reduction in the fantasy projection. A hate will give you a 10% reduction and an enraged if you really hate him will get you a 15 percent reduction in that player's fantasy projection so this is one of the great ways to put your spin on a slate players that you like players that the coaches like at dfs army whatever you want to do hit a like if you don't like a player smash the dislike button and you'll get more of the players of course that you like because their projection is increased a little bit Once you've got your lineups all set up, figure out how many lineups you're making. So we'll run 20 lineups right now and um, figure out how many lineups you're going to make. You've set up your stack. You've hit your likes and your dislikes or or your, you've adjusted your player pool. Now we hit optimize and boom, you've got 20 lineups to look at. A couple other little details here in the exposures box. So first of all, one thing that you might want to do is just understand combinations. So in the case of this run, it looks like two, uh, well, uh, you know, we see the players that are popping a ton. If I want to see every lineup that Kenneth Walker is in, I would click right here on this little search bar. And now all of the lineups showing up on the right-hand side are ones with Kenny Walker in it. And it will show you all of the Kenny Walker lineups to do with what you will. You can actually even check two boxes and you'll see all of the lineups with Walker and Wilson. Some people want to make sure combos happen. Some people want to make sure they don't happen. Whatever you want to do, this is how this works. So every lineup now in the exposures box will have both of these guys. And if I click all three, we'll have every lineup will have all three of these guys. So you're able to, as a user, quickly search your lineups. If you wanted to adjust one of them, you can simply click right here and it allows you to change a player. So I remove Tua. You could put in Kyler Murray, and now you have a Kyler Murray version of that lineup right there. Finally, one of my favorite features on the Domination Station is the stack combination. So this allows you to see what stacks were set up for your particular quarterbacks. So in this case, we really have 90% Tua, and the stack has been 100% Tua and Tyreek Hill. Now let's say you don't want 100% of Tua with Tyreek Hill, you can set a max limit based on the number of lineups you've created right here. So in the in the initial run, we had 18 lineups out of 20 with Tyreek Hill, Tua to Tyreek Hill. 
I just set the max exposure of that stack to nine lineups and I'm going to hit it again. I'm going to show you how it did not go over nine. So now you see your Tua Tyreek Hill, only nine stacks. And then of course it's swapped over to a different player. Once you're ready to download your lineups and upload them to DraftKings or FanDuel, simply click download, save it, name it, upload it, and you're good to go. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the basic tutorial for the Domination Station NFL mode. If you wanted to learn more about stacking or how to attack a big tournament, I advise you to either watch the many live stream breakdowns we have recordings of under the basic training tab for NFL or look at the specific tutorials for how to stack using either legacy or correlative stacks.